because you're beating them up with your own children. How am I supposed to make the game? What if the second Mario game was almost the same as the first? Hi fellas, Leo's here. See, I believe I accomplished enough in my lifetime, but I cannot reach higher grounds my current specs, so I decided to make myself a sequel. Oh, I'm so excited! There's so many things I could do! I could go upwards, or pull things to the ground, or sleep a whole life away! Or do the same shit as before, but hard on myself, that also works. We all love Mario, right? He lands you in court about as much as Disney does, he's great. Pretty much everyone and their mother know the mustache and the inspirational events behind the characters and the story, and how it almost single-handedly saved the game industry. After enslaving a monkey. But just how much this one game revolutionized how games were created, that is impressive. Game just consisted of one scream, maybe two, kill the enemies, or eat the balls and blam, five dollars please. Just imagine as a kid in 85 looking at this one screen going on. But then you start moving right, and then you realize that the camera is moving with you. And that is when you start your progress towards... Uh, but that's bad. This game was tough for a kid. Fish jumping on bridges, labyrinths on castles, and hammer guys. Miyamoto hates children. The game of course became a phenomenon, and not only the birth of a genre, but also the true jumpstart to the Mario franchise. You could argue about Donkey Kong, but five stages weren't gonna carry this franchise, and regular Mario Brothers either. It's just a Donkey Kong spin-off. So this bad boy right here is what truly brought game into a whole new level, believe it or not. Yeah, with all these fancy 8K graphics, no load times, and 120 FPS, it's hard to imagine, but there was a point in time when this was the average. Yeah, we were eating dirt, but it was fun. Like in preschool. But now having the screen move beyond the single level, hell, with different physics or a few of them. Oh, and don't forget, the NES was showing more cards on screen than just, well, black. And also don't miss out on the controllers. Sure, with the Atari 2600, you got a spanking hot joystick to do things God didn't intend humanity to, but that didn't help matters. The NES now had a D-pad for multiple Damn it! and also two big red buttons and a start and select buttons. That's four times the interaction. That's cheating! But overall, having a game outside of the arcades that you could really play indefinitely, play with your friends and siblings, compete with each other and last for days, that's a blessing. So of course, with this joker nod, Nintendo managed to bring the video game industry back from the ashes and start anew. Bringing new experiences, even competition, hell, bringing up shit that doesn't work, whatever it goes! But there was one small problem. Sure, the games were good and all, but a little basic, kinda arcadey, and it could've been the risk of falling back on the problem of the old arcade and Atari games. The same thing over and over with no increasing quality. I mean, obviously, it's silly now when you look at how far we've come, but think about this. What if the second Mario game was almost the same as the first? Well, that is where Mario 2 comes to answer that question. God, no. Yeah, the original Super Mario Bros. 2 that came out in June 3rd, 1986, around half a year after the first game, and it shows. The game looks and plays exactly the same as the original. It's basically a pack of extra harder stages for the original. Oh, but it adds a new power-up. That would be a funny police report. The poison mushroom. Medically accurate, not that fun. And the worst part, it's one of the very first things that you can find in the game, and in the original version, it looks very similar to the original. Just an additional screw you to kids. Oh, you wanna have fun? Not in my house. The game has eight levels like the original. Oh, did I thank you for a coward? It has nine, actually. <laughs> and also a bitch! It has four more levels, but you have to beat the game eight times in a row, while level nine you get by beating the game without using warps. Oh, and there's a loading screen. In a cartridge. Have fun! But it's not all that bad, you have upside down pipes! The game ended up being a success in Japan, selling over two and a half million copies. Probably because of Luigi mode. Yeah, he has his own play mode, where you can jump higher and has less traction. So the correct way to play... As we all know, the game was too hard for the rest of the universe, apparently, so they took another game already being made by Nintendo, Doki Doki Panic. A psychological horror visual novel that got turned into a platformer with the Mario characters, introducing Toad and Peach, all with their unique abilities. Initially, the game was developed to be more complex with two-player cooperative action in mind, and also adding horizontal scrolling to make it more Mario-like, or just to have more fun! But it was deemed too complicated for the Famicom aka NES to process, so the idea for the project was temporarily shelved until Fuji TV requested a game be made with four characters in mind. The director, Kensuke Tanabe, thought, But how am I supposed to make the game? Yes! And we got Doki Doki Panic. Ultimately, when they decided to take this game and change it to a Mario one, not much had to be replaced. Just the character sprites, a few power-ups here and there, and also changed the way to beat the game. Yes, in the original you had to beat the whole game with all the characters, so basically beat the game four times. 
they sure love not turning off their consoles. And like that, the game known as Super Mario Bros. 2 was released in September 1988, two years after the original Mario 2. That's three years after the first game, which is kinda nuts when you think about it. Two years later we got Mario 3, and one year later Super Mario World. So they were busy at Nintendo making this crazy bastard look good. So, so that's cool and all, but why are you getting to the whole saving the industry bit? Yes, I'm making fun of you. I just believe that we should talk about the game itself first to see where all the genius came from. So here it is, Super Mario Bros. 2. The game starts with a story if you let the game sit still. Mario has a dream where a door leads him to a mysterious place named Subcon, and a voice tells him he needs to defeat the evil frog Wart and free their land. He wakes up and tells about his dream to Luigi, Peach and Toad, all reporting having the same dream. Then they go for a picnic. Gotta love that old school storytelling. And they find a door in a cave and get transported to the actual world of Subcon. And that is where you start off when you begin the game. But beforehand, you had to choose a playable character. Mario being the balanced one, not great, not terrible, but just sh Luigi, once again, can jump really high and kick his way to stay up there for longer. I mean, he just breaks the game. But what about Toad? He's fast. If you're holding something. So if you're a speedrunner, you're business. I gotta be honest, I never played much with Toad. I didn't even know he could run faster like that until recently, but I gotta hand it to him. Oh man, my son has these amazing skills, his drawings are disgusting and not rich! And finally, we have Peach. She's slower but can hover in the air for a while, which is like a nerf version of Luigi. So pick Luigi. Funny thing, if you beat the game with an equal number of stages with each character, you get a special ending. So that ain't happening, moving on. The game starts and we fall from the door on the sky onto Subcon. And for anyone curious, if you were to go through that door, you only spawn back on the same place. Well, there you go, get that one off the list. When you start, you would expect Goombas or Koopa Troopas, but instead you get Shy Guys, one of the staples of the Mario series moving forward. And when you try to stomp on them, you realize they don't die. But if you try and use that other button on the controller, you pick them up. So in excitement, you try launching them, but they don't die. But if you pick them up again and launch them at a different enemy, that's when they die. Lesson 1. Vandalism is fun. And at the bottom, you reach another door, and you try using the buttons on the controller and find that pressing up gets you through the door. And now we're in the actual level, and you see more enemies and these plants on the floor. And if you pick them up, you see that you can get vegetables and use them as weapons. Lesson 2. Your parents wanna kill you. But sometimes you find this curious bottle, and if you throw it at the ground, a door appears. And if you go through, you find a dark version of the same area with a mushroom that increases your life and find coins from pulling the grass. Lesson 3. What? And when you continue through the stage, you reach a decision. You either continue climbing up or use a shortcut that requires learning new tactics, like holding down to build up energy and do a power squat jump, blowing up walls and the like. So you have to win your way through the quick road. And finally you reach the boss of the stage, most of which are this new character Birdo, who spits eggs. I think there's a metaphor here. And you must jump on them, pick them up and hit them with it. Yes, you're beating them up with your own children. Lesson 4. 1. And when they're defeated, you pick the crystal ball to move on to the next stage. Alternatively, you can climb up the vines, avoid enemies on a longer route to reach the same boss. And also, once you finish the stage, you use the coins that you collected to gamble for extra lives. Lesson 5! Yay! So, what have we learned here? Well, for one thing, it's cool, it's optional. But also, look at how much they created compared to the original. You can go in multiple directions, even down, and not die if you just jump like an idiot. And here's the genius behind the game. This feels like a true sequel. This is just lazy. And Nintendo knew this. They knew people were going to hate how tough the game was when it was aimed at kids. After all, gaming was still niche, aimed at children as toys, and kids would enjoy something they hate. That comes later. So if Nintendo would have made the mistake of going through and releasing this as a sequel, well, first of all, it wouldn't have sold as much as the original because why buy the same game twice? And second, everyone, both parents and kids, would have felt the video games weren't evolving, just stagnating on the same thing that worked the first time. They would expect Mario 3 to be just another pack of levels like this one and not even bother with it. Hell, with the other franchises as well. Why do you think people give so much shit to Mega Man 4 through 6? They just see it as a... Yeah, same as before, but now more dark, big woof. And when Mega Man X came out, it blew everyone away. Not just because it wasn't a new console, but because it revolutionized everything about games. I'm not saying that Mario 2 was like the American Revolution, I'm saying it's like a trial by combat. It got the job done, and it sure did by selling over 7 million copies, making it the 4th best selling NES game, and the best selling standalone game not being a packing game, so not cheating. It was so successful that they were releasing in Japan under the title Super Mario Bros. USA. I don't know if that's insulting or not. Mario 2 is often quoted as one of the best of that console generation, and I can see why. Normally when people look back on the game, it's usually Oh yeah, it's pretty good! Not the best in the Mario series, but still really fun. 
Well, it's either that or... Yeah, some people found it offensive that we got this stupid ass easy game for kids instead of the Tough as Nails original sequel. Because Ghosts and Goblins is fun to remember, right? Who cares? We end up getting the game on the All Star versions anyway. And it's even better because not only you can save your file, but also only need to beat it once to unlock the extra stages. And to be perfectly honest, when I was younger, I played this more than Mario 3 on the All Stars version. I guess I was mesmerized by the fact that I had four whole playable characters for myself. The graphics being so colorful, and it being just hard enough for me to die off and forcing myself to try again. Also, you don't go back to the very beginning of the game when you die, only the level so you can leave it there and try again later. They also buff the little casino game so it's easier to get extra lives. In the original game, it's pretty much impossible to see where the company is going to part. Oh, and you know what else I love about the game? The bosses, not just Berta, but also the ones at the end of the levels. It's not just about throwing fireballs at them or jumping on the axe, but throwing blocks at them or throwing bombs at the right moment so they get caught up in the explosion is amazing! All five of them. Yeah, they reused two of the bosses for level 3 and 7, but better than levels 1 through 8. DUDE STOP! HE'S DEAD! And my favorite part, the snow level. Yeah, it has that eye physics bullshit from time to time, but damn it if I'm lumping some snow in my games. Can't blame me, never seen it, not legally allowed to. So that's it, the game's really fun, it has multiple layouts to mess around with, like deserts, clouds, grass, cash, or ass. However, after playing through so many games, I came to appreciate Mario 3 more and play the other Mario games as well, but I can't shake this feeling that this game deserves more recognition for what it did for video games in general. Yes, the original paved the way for every franchise and company out there, but Super Mario Bros. 2 reinforced that notion that video games can be much more than just the initial spark of imagination. It's curious, you often hear people saying, oh that's sparking new games, you still see for the original one. And even though I try to disagree with that notion as much as possible, sometimes it is the reality of the situation, and it's what would have happened with Mario 2 if Nintendo wasn't careful. And I'm glad that the developers do try to innovate with their sequels, even if they use the same engine. They improve upon it, making it flashier, faster, and just more enjoyable than the first time around. So, now that I know the value of a sequel, I need to improve myself to be better in every way. But I need a degree to prove it, so I enrolled myself in college. I hope they have a Luigi mode.